You're listening to Sadie 9. Call 0300 200 40 41. Tweet at BBC Essex. Text 8133 and start your message with Essex. BBC Essex. Coming up to 11 minutes past 7 o'clock. If you're meant to be up at 7, you are well and truly late. If you don't have to get up till quarter past, lucky you. Turn over, pull that duvet up for another four minutes. Uh, is it acceptable to use sexual images of women to sell products? This week, Playboy magazine announced it was bringing back nude models just a year after it said it would scrap them. And on the Tube network, there have been calls for the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, to ban images of a poster featuring the reality TV star Chloe Kardashian in a leotard and not much else. Lucky like she's wearing a leotard, I think. She's selling a weight loss product. Natalie Collins is part of the Essex Feminist Collective and Vicky Dark is an erotic novelist from Southend and a former lap dancer and a former loud women on my programme as well. And I welcome both ladies to my programme. Morning, Natalie. Morning, Vicky. Morning, Morning Sadie. Morning, Natalie. <laughs> Morning. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you on. Nice to have you on. OK, so I'm going to... N Natalie, first of all, do we still have a problem with naked images? I think the, the problem isn't nudity. The problem is the depiction of nudity. So it's not that the Protein World adverts are not being complained about because there's a woman whose thigh is showing and up her leg is showing. It's because it's a representation of women that is really oppressive and is saying you should want to be like this. And especially for young women, it's promoting this ideal that you should want to be like a Kardashian who are not famous for anything other than being famous. So it's not nudity per se. It's the issue of the type of nudity and the type of message that nudity is sending. But, I mean, it has been going on forever, though, hasn't it? Will we ever, ever, ever see a time when the female body isn't used in advertising because it makes people look? Well, Vicky? Well, um, I mean, if you look throughout the history of um, art and, you know, there's the female body has uh, always been used, but the fact of the matter is it's now used in a sexualised manner and, and an objectified manner, and obviously there's complexities that that can be had in, in discussion of that, but the fact of the matter is is that we are now a bunch of uh, signs and signifiers. We're not even a uh, materiality anymore. We're not a biological body. We are what... Uh, the commod commodification culture dictates what we are, and Kardashian is, uh, you know, reflective of that because she is so wealthy. I mean, she's made uh, a deal with the the patriarchal bargain they call it, and uh, it's that she's sold into something that um, dictates what a woman should be, and that is a body that is, um, you know, a curve, cur a bunch of curves, and and a kind of a focus on the body, not on the mind. And uh, that is very unhealthy for people to, and young people to uh, replicate. Um, that's what's out there now. But hasn't she changed, in a way, hasn't she changed um, the body shape in that we now look at that and think, oh, a big bottom is all right. I mean, I can remember growing up and, and hating my bottom. Be and it, it's, it's never changed. I mean, I grew up when it was time when it was good to be flat-chested and, and small-bottomed. It was, it was the time of the... the uh, you had to look like a boy to be really in fashion. That was the time I grew up. And then it changed a bit to you've got to have, like, enormous breasts, and that was the fashion. And now it's these enormous bottoms. I mean, what, won't it just always happen like that, Natalie? I think we have to be really careful by saying just because something's happened forever or it's always happened that that's a justification that it's okay because it's not sexual violence has happened forever that doesn't mean we should go oh well rapes always happened therefore let's just accept it we have to constantly fight for a better world and a world where women and girls aren't expected to have any particular body shape yes the body shapes change but now people get bum implants it's not mm. it's not ever that every body shape is acceptable and that whoever you are the most important thing about you as a woman is the in is who you are is that whether you're a, a good person whether you're a, a capable person whether you're a competent professional person as it is for men the, the reality is that for women it's about whether you have the body shape that is currently decided to be fashionable i mean for women fashion isn't just about the clothes you put on your body it's about the shape your body is, which is completely ridiculous. And so it's all about, you know, this is about selling a product. All this is about selling a product. The, the whole purpose of the beauty industry and various other industries is about dragging women's self-esteem out of them and then selling it back to them so they can make money. The beauty industry is worth millions and millions of pounds. 
the things that nobody actually needs to buy. And you've got to make women feel pretty terrible about themselves if you want them to spend money on things they don't actually yeah. need. Well, Natalie and Vicky, stay where you are because we're going to come back to you with the, with this conversation and I'd love you to join in as well. 0300 200 40 41. Do you feel uncomfortable when you are on the tube and there are p- these pictures of scantily clad women? It, will we ever change society? Will it ever change? Or have we, do we have to give up a, a, and fight another fight because it's never going to change because that's it? 0300 200 40 41. And we'll be speaking more with my guests after the latest travel now at BBC Essex. My guests in the studio talking about is it acceptable to use sexual images of women to sell products? Have we got a problem with nudity? Should we just get over it and say, look, it happens, it's happened forever, and that's the way it is? My guests are Natalie Collins, part of Essex Feminist Collective, Vicky Dark, an erotic novelist from Southend, and former Loud Women as well, who's in the studio with me. Natalie um, joins us as well. Um, so, so, Vicky, we, we were hearing from Natalie there saying, you know, it's, it's all about women shaping. But when you look at the world at the moment we've got Theresa May um, as Prime Minister we've got Angela Merkel who's incredibly strong uh, it annoys me that we talk about the clothing they wear because I don't think I ever commented on what David Cameron was wearing I did I do comment though on what Jeremy Corbyn is wearing if he doesn't look as smart as the men <laughs> so it, you know we as women we do have to choose our fights don't we yeah we do and um, it's uh, I mean just what you said there Sadie is reflective of you know how kind of the onus is on the 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 body of the woman and the the presentation and the, the fact you know how far she's come in the stakes of decoration and that you know at the end of the day that's really kind of um, reductive that is re- that's always going to be reductive if we just um posit the woman as body I mean, yeah, but we don't. We've got we've got Theresa May, who's like what she's sixty or something. We've got Angela Merkel, who's, who'd never make a Kardashian type figure. We do have these we, these figures we, to look, we do. look we, up to, if that's the yeah. Right well, I mean, we do have uh, positive um, representation role, yeah. role models of women, you know, and uh, positions of power. Yeah, we have Theresa May. I mean, in the pinnacle um, role of the country, but, and the Queen, of course, and the Queen, of course. Here you know, go. yeah, yeah, you know. But um, I mean. In terms of being a matriarchal society, I don't think we have that. And I think in the mass culture, um, which dominates so much of what's thought about and what's replicated amongst the young and what's spoke about, what's embodied, um, you know, we have um, a certain representation of women um, and, and it's diverse, but it's generally around... You know, it, it's a false sense of liberty that's being um, perpetuated, that's being elicited here by the the adult industry, which is pervasive, which is everywhere, I mean, which dominates thought. Talking and about the adult industry, what about Playboy? Are they right to bring back naked women in, in their magazine? They had said they weren't. Let's ask Natalie. What do you think, Natalie? Oh, well, it, show, it just shows you that Playboy wasn't being bought for the articles, was it? You know, <laughs> the fact is that they were, they didn't drop naked women because they suddenly had a conscience and thought, oh, we shouldn't, you know, have naked women. They did it because people can get free naked women on the internet and they can get as much online pornography as they want and they can get, you know, por- online pornography, 80% of it is hardcore sexual violence. So, you know, they they couldn't compete with that as a, as a magazine that you're selling on the top shelves. And so they thought, maybe if we don't have nakedness that's a way of kind of doing you know selling this magazine better and what they've realized is oh nobody will buy it if there's no nakedness so I think we can all accept now that it's quite obvious Playboy is not about the articles or anything else it's about the naked women so and it, to be honest I think we have so much bigger issues in terms of the um the, of online pornography that actually what we see um in Playboy is, is really quite insignificant although I think what we have to recognize is that Playboy and others like it paved the way for what we now see in online pornography so they paved the way to a culture where it's acceptable and normal and kind of a rite of passage to watch women and being kind of degraded in some way so I think we you know in one sense I really don't think it's a huge concern compared to the wider issues but I think you know again just like this protein world advert we need to continually fight on all all sides I think you know what you said there about Angela Merkel or Theresa May um, the, the, the fact that individual 
women have achieved anything does not suggest that women as a collective body of people have achieved anything. 72% of girls in the UK will be emotionally abused before they reach 16. You know, that this, this what this individual achievement of women does is it's actually quite dangerous. I mean, it's really great. It's really important to have women in positions of power and authority. But what it says is, oh, we've solved that. Oh, there's no problem for women. And yet, actually, day in, day out, the problems for women are huge. And if we look at other elected people like Donald Trump, actually, people are wanting to vote for people who are going to oppress women and going to make women's lives worse. I, you know, I, I, we, with certain things that were said and came out as locker talk, it frightened the life out of me as a woman because I don't know any men who speak like that in lockers. But but there we go. Um, what about you then, Vicky? What about this thing of uh, Playboy not using, um, not uh, who are bringing now back naked women? I mean, I remember that we had naked men brought into Cosmopolitan and, you know, it didn't make us suddenly go down a, a road. We had a look and went very nice, move on. I think it's, um, it, you know, it, it's... It um, derives from a really deep structure. I mean, I think the moment that we enter language, I know it's a it's a, a real you know kind of big thing for people to to um, assimilate. But basically, when we enter language, we are trained, uh, we are conditioned into you know embodying certain gender roles and uh, you know in in their many forms. But generally, the male form, uh, you know, uh, kind of the the male on his side, he has the and the more the more positive attributes and that is you know he is empowered he is he is uh, encouraged to be active in uh, and dominant and, and on the woman's side uh, the submission and uh, the decoration and all these negative aspects and we work and you know and we in a progressive society it's great because there is room for you know contra uh, discussion and uh, protest against the dominant ideologies and you know that's great there's a huge kind of feminist um, uh, body out there now on social media and I do believe that we are making progress I, d I really do believe that we are making progress but that's not to say that you know who we are arguing against um, you know they are so uh, I have, the the word is strong, but they are brainwashed. They are absolutely, you know, they are they. Um but isn't it a thing that with youth, doesn't that come with, doesn't it come with age that you actually look back, which is why I had an argument once with, with a plastic surgeon because he was doing lots of boob jobs. And I said, but this is a fashion. This is a fashion. When I was young, I, I strapped my boobs in because it was a flat chested look that I was after. And, and, and no, I didn't go and get them cut off. It was a fashion. And, and then suddenly it's a fashion to have breasts. And you grow out of that. You grow up and by the time you get to about 30 or you've got kids, kids or whatever you realize it's it's just a fashion for women so if they want big big bums now you know don't go for implants whatever just 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 stick a padding up your up your backside if that's what the thing is at the moment isn't it just a fashion thing that girls go through and come out the other side natalie i think um i think the, one of the things is that yes it is about fashion and it is about immaturity for for young women who haven't had and girls who haven't had much experience in the world and and perhaps caring more about what the world thinks of us and that kind of thing but i don't i don't think it's solely about fashion and just uh, just saying to people oh just don't worry about it you'll grow up and you'll be fine i don't think that's particularly helpful you know when i was a young person that really would have just made me feel patronized it wouldn't have actually helped me to engage with the issues and i think what we need to to do is we need to equip young people particularly to critically engage with their culture and saying why are these things the way they are you know the the reality of social media now is that young people can gain numerical value for how hot they look mm. you know they can get instagram likes they can get mm. facebook likes if their pictures are sexualized enough and so we're getting this huge level of reinforcement from wider culture we have parents who are really uh, ill-equipped to deal with digital culture and kids mm. who are absolute digital natives so i think it's it's all it is it is something that age is relevant to but i don't think wholly you know i think there's lots of older women who feel hugely insecure who feel hugely ignored you know women older women are invisible when you're kind of you know I, as you'll know in who the are media, you talking to sorry natalie we, we've got to leave it we've got to leave it there but i thank you so much for for coming on <laughs> i think you're absolutely right i think we've got to look more um and empowering uh 
people, but young people. But as you say, you can't you can't you can't tell pe- young people what to do because they go the other way completely. All you can do is guide and sort of say, look, hasn't she done well? Crikey, she's just wearing a smart suit. Isn't that nice? Why don't you get one? Vicky Dark, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for the invite. You have Always been a, a pleasure. A pleasure as ever to have you have you on. And uh, do check out Vicky Dark. That's V I double K I Dark as well. Thank you very much indeed. Over Thank to you, you now. Your thoughts. You're listening to Sadie Nine. Call 0300 200 40 41. Tweet at BBC Essex. Text 8133 and start your message with Essex. BBC Essex. I love talking women with women. I love it, actually. And uh, you're very welcome as well to, to join in. Men talk with men, women talk with women. And, and you realise, actually, that you're trying to head down the same way. How do you guide people? How do you guide young people? Because you look back, you don't you? You look back as you're older and you go, oh, if I'd have known that then, if I'd have only known that then. I say to my nieces and my nephews, every time I, I see them, enjoy how you are, enjoy where you are, because you look back and go... I thought I was fat, I thought I was thin, I thought I was muscly, I thought I was this, I thought I was that. And you look back and you go, I looked, I was gorgeous, I was gorgeous. And you don't recognise it. So just just enjoy them, enjoy the moment, because all of us are getting older, all of us are changing, and so just enjoy that moment. How do you empower young girls? Um, is it by uh, taking nudity in our stride maybe and saying, oh, if the people want to do that, they want to do that, or is it actually standing up and shouting and being counted? <sighs> We have to choose our fights, don't we, as women, and uh, and we do have to fight. And I know that people think, oh, you've got it. Um, but actually, no. When when you look at the arena, when you look at the, the working arena and you realise that women are 51% of the population, you just you just have a look. Have a look in Parliament next time you go in there. And it does annoy me when, when certain people sort of say, oh, it should be reflective of society. And you actually go, yeah, it should, actually, <laughs> actually. Uh, but maybe us women just don't want that. I don't know. Um, if you'd like to give us your calls on that, you are very welcome, of course. Um, coming up after eight, I'm, I'm asking you, we're speaking about a man who... Had-